Hi, and welcome to this video on Python optimizations in turning. Python optimizations we'll cover in a few videos, and this one is going to focus on interning of integers in particular, and what interning is. So one important note is that a lot of what we discussed with memory management and garbage collection and what we're going to discuss now with optimizations and memory footprints are really specific to the Python implementations you're using. Now, in this course, we're using CPython, which is kind of the standard, the reference Python implementation, which is written in C, hence the name CPython, but that's kind of the version of Python. However, there are many other versions of Python that exist. Uh, for example, Jython is written in Java, and it can import and use any Java classes. And in fact, it even compiles to Java bytecode, and so it then runs in a Java virtual machine. You also have Iron Python. Now, Iron Python is written in C Sharp and it targets the .NET CLR or the Mono CLR. You also have PyPy. Now, that one's interesting. It's a Python interpreter written in Python. So, and it uses a specific version of Python. It doesn't use C Python. It uses R Python. R Python is a subset. It's a statically typed subset of Python that is written in C, but that is specifically built to build interpreters, in particular Python, for example. So that's PyPy. And there are many others. And if you're interested in that, you can take a look at that um, URL that's down here, that link, and you'll see that there are many other Python implementations as well. But for this course, and certainly for the purposes of these discussions, I'm referring to CPython. Now, the version of CPython also makes a difference. Okay. Now, in this version, in this course, I'm using version 3.6, and so depending on what you're using, your results may be slightly different. Okay, so earlier we saw that if we wrote that code, that Python code, a equals 10, b equals 10, then a was a reference, a pointer to some object in memory, integer, with value of 10. But b was also assigned the same memory address. So Python automatically created a shared reference for us. But look at this. If we write a equals 500 and b equals 500, then a points to this object in memory. But Python doesn't create a shared reference in this case. It points b to a new object at a different memory address. So it would be safe to create the shared reference because integers are immutable, but it doesn't. So what's going on? Well, it's something called interning, and interning basically is reusing objects on demand. So at startup, CPython preloads or caches a global list of integers in the range minus 5 to 256 inclusive. So what that means is that any time we reference or use an integer in that range, Python is going to use the cached version of that object. It's not going to create a new one. It's going to look it up in its list and say, okay, I'm going to use this existing one already. So it's going to reuse that memory address. And that's what we saw. When we took an integer like 10 that was in that range, we saw that we were getting shared references. When we used 500, we saw that we were getting different references. That's because we're outside of that range. So essentially, the integers in the range minus 5 to 256 are singleton objects. And we'll get into exactly what singleton objects are when we get to the section on object-oriented programming. But basically, singleton objects are uh, classes that can only be instantiated once. So whenever you try and reinstantiate them, you just get the original version back. So it's kind of the same thing that's happening here. Why do this? Well, it's an optimization strategy. Small integers show up relatively often in our code, and so Python decides, okay, I'm going to pre-cache a certain range of integers. You obviously don't want to pre-cache too many, right? Because now you're starting to incur memory overheads. This happens at startup, so, you know, startup may take too long if you try and cache too many, and it, you know, there's a point of diminishing returns. But so they decided that minus 5 to 256 was a pretty good cross-section of interning. So now when we write a equals 10, well, Python just has to point to that existing reference for 10. It doesn't have to create that integer object. And creating an integer object does take some work. And we'll see also what the memory overhead is 
every time we create an integer. But if we write a equals 257, well, that's outside of the range, minus 5 to 256, then we, you know, Python doesn't use the global list and we'll get a new object created every time. Okay, so let's take a look at some code and just see this in practice. So recall that Python will create singleton integer objects out of ob integers in the range minus 5 to 256. Okay, so that's the range. So if we create a equal to some number in that range, let's say 10, and then we also create b and make it equal to the same value, then remember what's going to happen is that the id of a is going to be a certain memory address and the id of b is going to be the same. So the Python memory manager basically will point you to that shared um, reference. Okay, So you have the same object being utilized. That's safe because integers are immutable. So we cannot change the value of b by modifying the contents of the reference, right? of the object being referenced, which means that a can never change because, well, we can never change the object that a points to. So the only way to change a is to change a's reference to something else. Okay? And changing that on b isn't going to affect what a is referencing. Uh, just to show you that if we take a equal to minus 5 and we take b equal to minus 5, then the memory address, we can do it this way, are the same, right? Memory addresses are the same. Now, the easiest way of comparing memory addresses, remember, is to use the identity operator is. So A is B, and it tells us, yes, it is. It is the same memory address. And if we take A equal to 256 and B equal to 256, then we can see if they have the main memory address, and they do. If we take A equal to 257 and B equal to 257, then A is B will return false, right? We are no longer using this singleton collection, right? So same thing, minus 6 and so on. Now, remember, we can create integers in different ways, right? We have a equal to 10, for example, right? We can also say b equals int 10. We can declare a new integer object using the constructor, okay? So we can pass in 10 that way. We can also say c is equal to int and pass in a string, okay? And that string, that constructor will default to trying to create an integer base 10, based on that string. If we want to try a different base, we could say int and let's do 1010 in base 2, right? Which is actually 10 in base 10. Um, actually, let me go back and let's make that equal to D, right? So we have A, B, C, and D. So if we print A, actually we'll print A comma B comma C comma D, Okay, they're all 10. And we can now print the ID of each one. ID of A, ID of B, ID of C, ID of D. That is because I'm sure the cell type changed to markdown. So instead, let's run it as code. So there we go. All right, and as you can see, the memory address of each of these variables is the same. So it didn't matter how we created that because the end result was an integer of value 10. It basically then looked it up and said, hey, I've got that already in my list of, you know, interned integers. And there it is. I'll use that one. Okay. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.